Good Thursday evening to you. Hope you're having a great week. Thanks for joining More Sports and Les Levine. Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine tonight, and we're going to talk Browns, Browns, and more Browns. Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter, Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter, will be joining us tonight. And when you think about the Browns season, an outstanding season, if somebody would have told you they're going to go to the playoffs, they're going to beat the Steelers in the playoffs, and they're going to have a legitimate chance to advance to the AFC Championship game, you would have said, yeah, I'll sign up for that, and I'll take it without any question. Let's welcome in Mary Kay Cabot. She is the Browns beat reporter here on Cleveland.com as well as for the Plain Dealer. And Mary Kay, you've covered this team for a number of years. Put into perspective how impressive this season was and how important it was to getting the franchise headed where they're going. I think that Browns fans can be really excited in knowing uh, that they have a football team that is poised for sustained success now. And I think every year they can expect to be challenging for the playoffs and to be in the thick of it right until the end of the season. And, and the goal, obviously, is to win the Super Bowl. So I really do think that uh, the Browns will do everything they possibly can uh, to win that elusive Super Bowl. And, you know, they, they came pretty darn close. They just needed to win uh, two more games to get there. They came up a little bit short. And I think it's important that they were not satisfied with exiting early. Yeah, I think there was a real sense um, that there was an opportunity that they just didn't take advantage of. I'm not going to say it was a disappointment. I mean, ultimately, the result was a disappointment. But there was a real opportunity for this team to, to really go in and win that game, I think. And I think they kind of felt that after the game. Absolutely, 100%. If you can stay within five points of the defending Super Bowl champions, you've got uh, Patrick Mahomes in the locker room. It was a missed opportunity, and I think it's okay to say that. Uh, they, they could have won that game. They should have won that game. They just needed to make a couple of more plays, and, and they would be going to the AFC Championship game in Buffalo this weekend against the Bills. And, and really, it's, it's okay uh, to, to have two things at play here. Number one, excellent season and everybody should be excited about that number two yes it was a disappointment and a missed opportunity well the one thing uh, that the browns have done is identified a general manager and a head coach and most likely a quarterback that triad always important uh, to to putting together a successful franchise for long-term success andrew barry recently addressed the media about his relationship with kevin stefanski which some feel was arranged but uh, Barry said, not so fast with that. I, I probably pushed back a little bit on the notion, Aditi, of arranged marriage. I, I think it probably did help that, that Kevin and I did have, um, you know, a relationship prior. But I think part of it is just like, Kevin's just a great guy. Like, a <laughs> guy, he's, you know, easy to work with, good human being, very smart. Uh, as I've mentioned multiple times on here, a, a great sense of, uh, a great sense of humor. Um, and, and, and ultimately, we, we are like-minded in terms of how we, how we see things, whether it's football philosophy, um, how we want football operations to work together, and just, really just our overall approach. doesn't mean we agree on everything all the time, but you know, we're able to have um, those discussions and work through any dis disagreements together. But he's, he's a fantastic partner, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly blessed to be working. Andrew Barry, the general manager, talking about his head coach, Kevin Stefanski. Let's bring back in Mary Kay Cabot. Uh, Mary Kay, that I would say is alignment, and it has to be music to uh, football fans' ears in Cleveland. They haven't had that in a long, long time, and it's genuine. It really is, and part of the reason is, I mean, this certainly was nowhere near an arranged marriage. I mean, Andrew Barry is largely responsible for Kevin Stefanski being here as head coach of the Cleveland Browns. He identified him uh, the previous year as somebody that they really wanted to be the coach of the Browns when he was uh, here working under uh, Paul De Podesta and, uh, and John Dorsey. And Paul and Andrew wanted Kevin to be the coach that year. They, they were 100% in Kevin's corner. John Dorsey wanted Kevin, uh, Freddie Kitchens, and John Dorsey kind of won that little uh, tug of war there. So uh, this was certainly not anywhere near uh, an arranged marriage. The, these guys were destined to work together, and uh, and Andrew uh, and and Paul were were absolutely ecstatic to be able to get Kevin uh, to coach their football team this year. It's working out great, and it really does show you uh, what alignment versus misalignment is all about. I wrote an article on Sunday 
uh, talking about why they chose how the 2017 draft went. Why did they choose Miles Garrett ahead of Patrick Mahomes? Didn't take Deshaun Watson. And the reason, the bottom line, uh, the way that all went down was the fact that they were not in alignment. That they had a head coach and a general manager that were completely at odds. And therefore, they did not get the right evaluations of players. And in some cases, uh, they may have made different decisions. You look at that. How important is Paul D. Podesta? Maybe we don't give him enough credit. A lot, about, a lot of people dismissed him as a baseball guy, but you're not asking him to identify who you should take with the 26th pick. You're asking him to put in a system, which he's shown he's pretty good at. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? It, it took him uh, a little while to kind of uh, get his system in place to the point where he was able to run the show where Jimmy Haslam and D. Haslam were trusting him to be the chief strategy officer that he is. Uh, in, in the first couple of years, they didn't really let him run the show. Uh, but now he is very much responsible for the alignment that's in the building in terms of him and then Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, everyone has, everyone's pulling in the same direction. Everyone wants the same thing. Uh, they want to get there in the same way. Uh, and they are all rowing in the same direction. When you look at, um, at the job Kevin Stefanski did, first year head coach, and that in and of itself is, is incredible, but to have it in a pandemic where you don't get training camp, everything's done virtually. Is there any doubt in your mind that uh, this guy should be the coach of the year? I really think he should be the coach of the year. I, I you know, he's got some competition because th there were some other really good coaches and some uh, really challenging circumstances. I mean, Ron Rivera got the uh, the Washington football team to the playoffs um, while he had cancer, and so I, you know, I do think that uh, Kevin Stefanski has some other other guys that he is going up against for that award. Now, voting would have concluded on January fifth. So they would have gotten through the, the entire regular season before the, uh, the vote uh, had concluded. So we don't know the answer to that yet. Um, but I do think that, that he should be coach of the year for what he was able to accomplish with this team. How impressive is it given that, you know, he'd never been an NFL head coach, but still kind of had the vision and, and the ability to carry it off without physically having his guys there? I mean, that. Think about the, um, the amount of challenges that you have to overcome in order to implement an offense and a defense when you can't get out on the field and, and do it very often. Well, that's why they got out to a little bit of a rocky start in their opener, but then they quickly pulled it back together. But that first game was the first time that they had ever seen their football team play live before. That was their preseason game. Their one and only preseason game happened in the opener against Baltimore, and uh, they learned a lot of things from that game. They learned a lot about Baker Mayfield in that game. Uh, they learned that, you know, he might not necessarily function as well, at least not back then within the pocket, that they needed to get him out on bootlegs and rollouts, keepers as they call them, and, um, you know, and that they needed to work more on their play action game. And once they figured all of those things out, then Baker really started to flourish and to shine. After he threw that one interception that cost Odell Beckham Jr. his season in Cincinnati, after that, he threw 20 touchdowns and two interceptions the rest of the way. That's remarkable. That's one of the, and that's why I actually picked the Browns to beat the Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday, uh, because he was hotter than almost any quarterback in the NFL with what he was able to do after that game. Well, you mentioned Baker Mayfield, and certainly he answered a, a ton of questions. Um, he, he will, you can't imagine that he won't have his fifth year uh, option picked up. Andrew Barry addressed it. Didn't really want to give anything away. That's not Andrew Barry's style, but um, take a listen to uh, the general manager on his quarterback, Baker Mayfield. I think you guys you know, know me well enough at, at this point that in terms of contracts, I don't think that this is really the appropriate uh, uh, forum to, to really talk about those decisions. I think that that's something that's a little bit more personal to me, the player and the agent. What I can tell you is um, really I echo the, the comments I had last week with Baker. I think um, he did an excellent job this year, right? He led us to a first playoff appearance in, you know, Eon. We've got 12 wins, uh, played winning football all year, uh, developed a really strong relationship with, with Kevin and the offensive staff. Um, and really, like I mentioned last week, he really grew before eyes on a weekly basis, both on and off the field. So 
Um, we're very, very pleased with him. Um, look, we, we, we wouldn't be where we were at the end of the season without his performance. And he played, a, he had a really strong season. Andrew Barry talking about Baker Mayfield. Let's bring Mary Kay Cabot back in. And Mary Kay, he's not going to say, we're going to pick up uh, the option and, and extend him. That's just not the way the game works. But that's the way this is definitely trending. There's no need for them to really do that either. Um, and the advantage is if you wait, you have a better idea of what the salary cap is going to be. Salary cap's still in flux because the Players Association and the league have to come to an agreement on it. Yeah, so I think the thing, the first thing that will happen is they will go ahead and pick up the fifth-year option. I think uh, that will be basically a no-brainer. It'll be guaranteed when they actually go ahead and do it. It'll be the first year that these fifth-year options are guaranteed under this new uh, collective bargaining agreement. So right when you exercise it, you're saying, yes, we are giving you that amount of money in 2022, $20 million or whatever it's going to be. Uh, the number isn't going to be as big as it normally would have been because of the way the cap situation will be this year. Uh, so that will be a no brainer. They'll definitely do that. In terms of the extension, they don't have to do that right away. Uh, they can take their time on that a little bit and kind of take the temperature, the climate of, of where things are going and, and decide when they actually want to go ahead and do the extension. I mean, they, they could wait and let him uh, play another year and see how, you know, how that year goes. And you know, maybe if he bets on himself, he gets a bigger contract. So, uh, you know, it might work in both of their favor to wait a little bit. Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter here on cleveland.com, as well as in the pages of The Plain Dealer. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of break, we'll switch sides of the ball. We'll talk a little defense with Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter. You're watching more sports. And Les Levine, we'll be right back. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take tech subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. Tri-C is here for you. Now more than ever, you need a post-secondary education. So I encourage you to start your journey here at Tri-C. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, Tri-C is where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. More sports and Les Levine continues. Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine tonight. We're going to switch sides of the ball. We'll bring Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter, back in in just a minute. Uh, the Browns defense um, needed some work. Everybody knew that they focused uh, their attention through the draft for the most part as well as free agency 
on improving the line and that offensive side of the ball around Baker Mayfield. Now it's reasonable to assume that uh, Andrew Barry will turn his attention to the defense this year. In fairness, you know, these next couple of weeks, we're, we're really going to go through a full self-assessment, not just roster, but um, football operations scheme, you name it, to make sure that we have a really good beat in terms of our planning entering the offseason. Uh, I do look, I think it's a fair observation to, to realize that, um, you know, the resources this this past year that we had going into um, going out into this past fall were uh, predominantly oriented to support the offense and support support the quarterback. Um, but that doesn't mean that we didn't, you know, we didn't make, you know, some, some investments all across, you know, all across the team. Um, we can have improvement anywhere. Um, you know, understand that, that obviously, uh, you know, we think we can certainly, certainly boost the defense as we go into, into 2021. But it's probably too early to make any declarative or definitive statements. But, you know, certainly understand the, the strengths of this. Andrew Barry talking about uh, free agency and the defensive side of the ball. Let's bring back in Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter. Mary Kay, uh, what about it? I mean, um, Andrew Barry's not going to come out and say, here's what we're going to do because it's, uh, it's a positioning, it's negotiating and those kind of things. He's not going to show his hand, but they're going to put their efforts into improving that defense. Yeah, I, I think that uh, they'll improve a number of areas on the team, and I think there are certain aspects of the defense that are going to need some help. First of all, uh, you know, Olivier Vernon is coming off a ruptured Achilles. He's in the last year of his contract. So that's one area you can look at. Another area to look at, I think, is uh, is cornerback because uh, Greedy Williams, although they're very confident he will come back 100% healthy from the nerve damage in his shoulder, I still think that you have to have contingency plans in case, in case that shoulder doesn't respond the way that you hope that it will. So they can re-sign Terrence Mitchell, but I still think that you know they would should need to look in uh, free agency and the draft for other cornerbacks. And then of course, a linebacker or two uh, would probably really help. A linebacker that can cover, a linebacker with some speed, and uh, and that can do some other things, sort of a hybrid type of a guy. And, and I think that they will be in much better shape. The other thing that we didn't point out, a lot of the guys that they signed on the defensive side of the ball were short-term, you know, one-year contracts that are up, obviously. So it, there are some areas there that they need to work on. If they were looking for a, a quality, do you think it's speed? Is that accurate to say you think? that They just have to get quicker. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's one uh, one area to address. And Andrew Barry said that today that you know he'll take more speed wherever he can absolutely get it. So I think I think you'll find uh, that they will look to do that. And um, you know when I look back at at the at the Chiefs game and you see Chad Henney running there for for 13 yards, obviously there's no way that should have happened. I think part of that may have been a function of Miles Garrett was. Uh, he was very, very hurt at that point. I could have seen him making that play had he been feeling a little bit better at that point. Uh, but I do think that they need to add more speed on this defense, whether it be in the back end, from their linebackers, or from an explosive pass rusher to complement Miles on the other side. The other thing um, to, to keep in mind is uh, there are guys that were missing. Uh, Billings up front, Andrew Billings, a defensive tackle, uh, would be nice as a run stopper. And then you mentioned Greedy Williams. There's also Grant Delpit, who they had big plans for. Uh, Andrew Berry gave an update um, about the status of Greedy Williams and Grant Delpit, guys in the secondary that are young and pretty talented. You know, Fred, we are confident in both guys. You never know with, you know, with significant injuries how that ultimately unfolds. But the one thing I can tell you about Grant and Greedy, the way that those two have attacked their approach to rehab, staying engaged with the team, and really, they prepared every week as if they were going to play, even you know when it became obvious that they weren't. Um, I'm very optimistic, very bullish on their physical recovery, and then ultimately, um, you know, when they do get back, you know, being able to, to, to play at a high level for us. I, I think those two individuals deserve a ton of credit because that's not easy to go through when, in Grant's case, you're a rookie, in Greedy's case, you're in your second year um, of your career in the NFL. Uh, it can be discouraging when all you want is quick progress and that's not necessarily happening but I think both those guys have done a phenomenal job with their rehab um, and certainly we look forward to having them. Andrew Berry talking about Grant Delpit and uh, the recovery of Greedy Williams. Uh, Mary Kate when you look at that they had some big plans 
uh, for Grant Delpit. And, and we've downplayed the injury bug that you know everybody has in its football. But there were a lot of pretty significant injuries that the Browns suffered really early in the year that they just kind of, you know, okay, we, we'll switch it and do this. In, in, you know, Delpit, Williams, those kind of guys were supposed to be starters. Yeah, they did not have a lot of continuity on their defense because of COVID and because of all the injuries. Uh, certainly, Grant Delpit coming back next year and starting at that safety position is something that they can't wait to have happen. As you mentioned, they were very excited about what he was going to do, and he was going to play an absolutely huge role. He was going to be a starter, and he was going to play pretty much every down. Greedy Williams, as I mentioned, I still think that you have to have contingency plans for Greedy because you're not really sure how that nerve is going to respond, although they seem very optimistic about it. Uh, but yeah, those two guys, if they come back, that that will be uh, the makings of a really good secondary. And I think they'll be pretty well set, especially especially at the safety position. I, I, by all accounts, Grant should be able to make it back 100% from the ruptured Achilles. He's young, he's making good progress. So hopefully for them, he will be back in full force. Who on that defense, um, you know, and, and I know Miles Garrett had a great year before he got banged up. You know, he had COVID, then he played late in the year. You, you could tell he was not 100%. But who on that defense really do you think kind of shined? Um, you, you know, maybe even a guy that was underappreciated but seemed to always make the play when, when needed. Well, you know, you have a lot of guys coming in and making uh, making a surprise play here and there, and I think that was one of the things – uh, that really helped them down the stretch is that you had MJ Stewart coming up with interceptions in back to back games against Pittsburgh. That was huge. Those were game changing plays. You had Olivier Vernon stepping in for Miles Garrett after Miles went out with COVID and came back and he wasn't himself. Olivier Vernon, until he ruptured the Achilles, was really coming through with, he had, I think it was eight sacks in his last nine games or vice versa, but he really came through uh, very big for the Browns at the end. Uh, you had guys like Carl Joseph making plays and then and Ronnie Harrison. So uh, you got like contributions from a bunch of different guys and that's exactly what they needed. Um, I'll ask you the same thing offensively. Who, uh, who's somebody that you think really kind of stood, stood to the forefront on the offensive side of the ball this year? Well, there are a couple guys that, that did. First of all, Wyatt Teller. You just cannot say enough about Wyatt Teller at right guard and what he did. He ended up as the number one rated guard in the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus. He was phenomenal. Uh, you have to give Bill Callahan a lot of credit for getting these right guys ready and having them play the way that they did. Same thing with Jedrick Wills. I thought Jed had a really nice season for a rookie making that transition. And then there's another guy that I was really big on this year. I mean, you cannot say enough about uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. I mean, he makes to play. He is ready for that ball. He stays ready on uh, scramble drills and things like that. And, and he is so reliable as a receiver. And I think the future is very bright for him. Yeah, Wyatt Teller is a guy, you know, we said the, the one of the biggest questions on the line was going to be right guard. You know, was it, it was could Jedrick Wills switch to left tackle? And who was going to play right guard? And really early in the season, Wyatt Teller answered that question pretty quickly. He really did. I mean, he, he was amazing. And even in this last game, there's a clip uh, that's out there that NFL Films has up, and it's showing, uh, it's showing Wyatt Teller, like, just pancaking uh, Tyron Matthew to the ground. And, uh, and it's just funny because he's mic'd up there, and he says, 77, put me on my ASS. And uh, <laughs> it's just so funny, this, just this uh, little clip, if you get a chance to see it. But that's the kind of play that, that Wyatt Teller put forth all season long. And, you know, he pulled and he did everything that he needed to do. He blocked incredibly for, for Nick Chubb especially. And, and he was just one of the bright spots of the season. Browns beat reporter Mary Kay Cabot here on Cleveland.com as well as in the page of the Plain Dealer. We're going to take a timeout. And on the other side of the break, we're going to talk more about that offensive line. Um, it was outstanding without question. Uh, we'll have that and more, more sports and Les Levine. We'll be right back. Stay with us. A friend of mine brought up Nature Stone. Our floor was not a nice garage floor. It was cracked and dirty and messy all the time. And now it's just pretty. It's a pretty garage floor. You could tell they really cared 
about what they were doing. They did an excellent job. There is a room of lovely people here that have been so nice to us and so great and such great service from the guys who did the floor. And we just really appreciate that. And I highly recommend it. Schedule your free cost estimate today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, wow it's, it's Nature Stone. Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. More sports and Les Levine continues. Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine tonight. We're going to continue talking Browns. We'll hear from Andrew Barry. Um, the interesting thing, the Browns offensive line, a little bit of a question mark. Um, you know, you had Jedrick Wills, a rookie. You had Wyatt Teller, who was starting. You signed John, uh, Jack Conklin as your right tackle. Um, Andrew Barry put it together, and they, they put an emphasis on it. And Andrew Barry looks like he got it right. A really good offensive guard, and he was proud of the way they performed. Yeah, Jake. I think you know I love my big guys, so I'm I'm very excited about this. You know, excited about this group. Excited about the work that they did with Phil. Uh, I think that's a position group where continuity is um, of paramount importance. Um, so I, you know, look, I think I think that group did a, a fantastic job, and look forward to continue to seeing them grow. Andrew Berry talking about the offensive line. Bill is Bill Callahan, the uh, offensive line coach. Let's welcome back in Mary Kay Cabot. Mary Kay, how about that in the job that Bill Callahan did that. That line was impressive. You, you shuffled guys in and out, and, and for the most part, they were very good. They really were, and they were a huge reason that the Browns were successful uh, this season. Uh, Ryan Grigson, uh, who is sort of a, a senior advisor to Andrew, Andrew Barry, uh, he really emphasized, he learned his lesson in, in Indianapolis when he did not protect Andrew Luck the way he should have until it was kind of too late. Uh, he learned his lesson from that. And he really emphasized here that they needed to protect Baker Mayfield and surround him with as much talent as possible and really support their quarterback. And that's what they did. And, and it has shown, I mean, he was able to stand back there and function the way that he needed to do. It doesn't happen like that on, a, on every team. Uh, he had the time that he needed to run this offense, and these guys blocked like crazy for that running game, and it just all worked together. Um, and, and they're all back, and most of them uh, under contract. So that's that's a, it'll be really interesting to see. Again, in the NFL, nothing's given, and, and um, but a second year with Bill Callahan in the same system, kind of working next to guys you're used to. Those those are things that you know, really good teams often take for granted. Yes, that's absolutely true. And the other thing is, uh, they'll still end up with the third place schedule. So, you know, that will help them as well, just in terms of uh, next season, not having to, uh, you know, to play the, the top, you know, the top one or two teams in the division every week. So, um, so yeah, I think that'll help. But having this line intact is, is going to be key. And having Baker Mayfield in his second season in this offense is, is also going to be great for him and the Browns. Yeah, and that hasn't happened. I mean, normally it's change the coach, change the offense, and, and it, you know, people don't really understand it has to be second nature. And, and I think it's starting to get to be second nature for the guys as, as the season has worn on. Yeah, well, you know what? I mean, you could see that the lights came on for Baker Mayfield midway through the season. The lights came on. As we mentioned before, after he threw that interception on his first pass against the Bengals, the one that resulted in Odell Beckham Jr. tearing his ACL, once again, he threw 20 touchdowns and only two interceptions 
the rest of the way, all the way through the playoffs. That's incredible. I mean, that is really remarkable to be able to do that. And it was like everybody kind of pitched in on that. You know, they figured out uh, the red zone. I mean, they were dynamite in the red zone. Uh, they worked really well again off the play action. Uh, teams just were really struggling to, to decipher whether they were running it or passing it. And it was just, uh, it was just, you know, poetry in motion almost. And I think that that Baker will have a lot to build on uh, in this offense with that next year. So the Browns will go into the offseason trying to figure out, you know, who do we draft, who do we sign in free agency. That's kind of part of the planning that's going on now. Uh, interestingly enough, it will be a little different combine, a, uh, a virtual combine, which which means you, you don't get to interview the guys there. You, you don't get to do a lot of the things that you're used to doing. Andrew Barry addressed that and didn't seem terribly concerned about it. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm, I'm naive or underestimating it. I don't really think it's going to be that big of a deal, Carol. I mean, we, we went through a whole spring where it was, where it was virtual, really on the fly, mid-process. Now at this point, right? All of us know how to use Zoom, right? All of us know how to use Zoom in, in FaceTime. The reality is the combine, you're still going to get the medical information. Um, you know, I think the league's done a nice job in, 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 in really organizing that. Um, we did a ton of player virtual interviews last spring. It seems like that will continue into this year. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to ascertain the, the um, you know, the physical measurable data that we need. I don't see any reason that, you know, we can't, work through the spring and again have a nice a nice process in place and and have a high quality draft so i don't, I don't really see that as an impediment at all all right let me let me uh, translate andrew barry saying we put in an offense and a defense virtually this scouting thing virtually will, that'll be pretty easy I, I mean what they did virtually is pretty impressive so i understand his confidence in them being able to do the combine virtually as well yeah, well, one of the biggest benefits of the combine is to do interviews with guys. That That's a huge part of it. I mean, you don't necessarily need to be standing there timing a guy. You can see that stuff. Uh, you know, you can watch that even on NFL Network. Uh, so the interviews, you can do those on Zoom. They are so used to doing Zoom work now uh, and FaceTime and whatever else they need to do. Uh, so I, I think they feel pretty confident. Even throughout the whole season, they had to do that with players that they were bringing in as free agents. So I don't think that uh, they're too worried about it. They're, they're ready to do it. The other thing to consider is that it looks like it's going to be another virtual offseason. Now, that's the thing that I think is a little bit different. Uh, that's different than running a combine virtually because uh, it means that you're not going to be able to get out on the grass and practice football again, probably, until you get back for training camp. And, and that'll be another challenge, just like uh, like it was this year for him. Uh, so, um, you know, I don't think Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry would, would know what to do if they made it easy or traditional on him at this point in time. Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter here on Cleveland.com, as well as for the Plain Dealer. Appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Thanks for the time and the insight, Mary Kay Cabot. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, and uh, we're going to step aside, take a quick time out. On the other side of the break, another Browns beat reporter, Dan Lobby, will join us. More sports and Les Levine will be right back talking Browns football. Stay with us. We're living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri-C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources, because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello, everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. 
Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week, and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page. Or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at smileyone.com. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine. Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine. Let's bring in Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter here on Cleveland.com, as well as in the pages of the Plain Dealer. Uh, Dan, as always, uh, appreciate the time. When you look at this Brown season, uh, you've seen a lot of them. Just uh, what are your takeaways from this? You know, it, it's impossible to not look at this season and call it a success because you come out of it feeling really good about your head coach, really good about your GM, really good about your quarterback. So certainly it ends in disappointment in Kansas City, and I do believe that the Browns missed an opportunity there uh, to maybe advance to the AFC Championship and, and take on the Buffalo Bills. But you know, even with that kind of bad taste to end the season, you still feel really good about the direction of where this team is going. And you know all those pieces on offense really are, are going to be back for the most part. So you can focus on fixing up that defense, and, and the future is just bright for this football team right now. Were you a little surprised that the Browns were not able to run the football against the Chiefs? That was the thing that in, in the first half. In the second half, they made some adjustments and were. But in the first half, there wasn't that, that push in that room that, um, that I've become accustomed to seeing with this line and Chubb and Hunt. I was surprised by Kansas City's defense. Uh, you know, I thought they were maybe better than the numbers showed, uh, but I also didn't think they were that, that strong of a defense and the Browns would be able to at least do something against them, like you said, maybe run the football because that run defense was really questionable. But, you know, being there, and I was at most of the games this season, only a couple road games I missed, that was the fastest defense I saw. They were flying around. And I, I don't know if it was because they were coming off that bye week and Andy Reid and Steve Spagnuolo had his guys ready to go. Uh, or if that is just really kind of what the Chiefs are, a really fast defense that flies to the football and, and knows what they're doing. Uh, I think it was a combination of, of great speed on that KC defense, but also when you've got that extra time to prepare and you know what the Browns are going to do, you can play fast you, because you're confident in what you're seeing. So I, I think there was just a lot of that. Sometimes we do this where we forget just how good those teams that have the buys are, and, and Kansas City showed that a little bit, I thought, on Sunday. Well, the other thing was, um, you know, they put a lot of guys in the box because the Browns didn't have a threat downfield. Now, there is a threat that could, uh, could be downfield. That's Odell Beckham Jr. Odell uh, showed some stuff of him rehabbing. Looks like his rehab is going very well. And uh, general manager Andrew Barry talked about that and uh, said, you know, so far so good with Odell's rehab. In terms of, call it the first half and the second half of the season, I do think that there's just an element of our, our offense just evolved over the course of the year. I think part of that is just chemistry, time on task, you name it. Um, you know, I think that's really independent of, of Odell. Uh, I've said, you know, multiple times, Odell's a, a good football player. He's, he, he acclimated nicely with, with our, with our program, with Kevin, um, you know, with his teammates. Um, and quite honestly, I just want as many good football players on the roster as possible. He's dynamic. Uh, Dan, do you think having Odell there to threaten would have it would have at least made Matthew think about coming flying into the box, which he did not think about that very often, as you said. He he just went after it. I, I do. I, I think having Odell on the field, this was one of those games where you just clearly missed 
having him out there. And I, I was really happy with Andrew Barry's answer there because he did a good job, I think, of explaining why you don't necessarily just look at it and say, you know, hey, Baker started playing a whole lot better after Odell got hurt, so it must be because of Odell. There were so many other factors in that. It's probably a discussion worth having, and, and I imagine they're going to have that discussion as, as a front office, as an organization, but the reality is, like Andrew said, uh, the uh, offense just looked better. They got a better feel of what they wanted to do. They played worse pass defenses in the second half. That, that was part of it as well. So, uh, you know, I, I think Andrew Barry has been nothing but supportive of Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, every time we've talked to him since Odell got hurt. And I think you see that Kansas City game and you really wish you would have had 13 out there. Yeah, without question. When you look forward, um, what do you, uh, the, the offense is pretty good. Do you think, are they going to do a similar thing where they concentrate on the defense and it's pretty methodical? Is that what you would expect this offseason uh, via free agency in the draft? I think so, and, and a part of that is just because I don't know how much more you can add to the offense. You know, Maybe you add some speed at wide receiver if you want to add another guy, but you, know, you also have a guy like Donovan Peoples-Jones. If you do, in fact, bring back Odell, you're adding kind of some speed in through the development of one player and bringing another player back off injury. Your offensive line is set, so maybe you're just trying to add depth there. I just think the way the roster is built, you've got these resources, these draft picks. There aren't a lot of areas where you're going to look at and say, well, we got to use the number 26 pick on this on the offensive side of the ball. But there are plenty of areas where you can say, yeah, I'll use that on the defensive side for sure. So I just think it's a matter of how set up the offense is. You've almost got a complete group over there. So really all those resources, it just makes sense to put it all on the defensive side. Uh, the other thing is, is, you know, when you talk to Andrew Berry, you know, there is a characteristic that he's likely looking for on the defensive side of the ball. And he addressed that when he talked to the media this week. You know, a couple different, uh, we can talk through the number of different position groups, but I'll always take more speed up and, up and down the rock, whether it's, you know, defense, offense, special teams. Um, this system is certainly predicated on speed. Uh, so really the short answer is yes. And I, I think quite honestly, that answer would be yes. In every and Dan speed, uh, on the defense was glaring in that 14 yard run Chad Henney had, you, you were watching yeah. it and it was just like, Whoa, <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad when you look at that run and you kind of just wish miles Garrett would have been a hundred percent because he was maybe the only guy. Uh, that could have caught Chad Henney on that play. So, yeah, that was an issue. Andrew Barry gave a couple of John Dorsey-esque answers today, I thought, and one of them was about wanting speed uh, at everywhere on the field. It's a very John Dorsey approach to things, and then he also said you can never have enough corners, and that is certainly uh, a John Dorsey philosophy. I don't know if he took those directly from John, but uh, a couple of Dorsey-esque answers, and yes, look, this team on both sides of the football, but especially on defense, really needs to add speed across the board. The other thing is that linebacking core, we've, we've talked about, anybody who's watched us knows we've talked about that since the beginning of the preseason. I was very intrigued. There was a couple games where Jacob Phillips looks like he's a guy that can run and tackle. The challenge with him is there are times when he was coming into the hole and you know he was not winning against a running back one-on-one. -on -one. That, that cannot happen. Especially with this group and the way it seems like they want their linebackers to play. Uh, you know, I don't know if they're necessarily looking for that rangy sideline to sideline coverage linebacker. I think they like these guys to play downhill uh, and, and try and you know stop the run game and you know get after the quarterback a little bit. So yeah, Jacob Phillips showed some promise, but he was dealing with injury a lot of the year when he was on the field. Like you said, there were good things and, and he, he wore the green sticker in place of BJ Goodson in one game and, and that's encouraging he was able to do that. But there are also things he just has to clean up. You, you can't just be a guy that makes a couple spectacular plays in a game, you've got to be solid down to down if you want to play that position and be the Mike linebacker moving forward or be a guy that's going to be on the field every play. Um, because I don't think this team is going to play a lot of linebackers moving forward. They're going to have Ronnie Harrison. They're going to have Grant Delpit back next year. I think you're going to see a lot of three safety looks. So there might only be one or two linebacker positions th that are going to get significant playing time. If I were going to give you a, a magic wand and say you can find an elite defensive player and pluck him onto this roster, where would it be? I think I would put him at corner. I know you've got Denzel Ward, but I just love the idea of having another elite corner and a guy that can just shut somebody down on that other side of the field. Because, again, I think you're, I think you're okay at safety with those two guys, Delpit, assuming he comes back healthy, and Harrison. 
you know, there's a part of me that wants to say linebacker because I love a good linebacker, but I just don't know that this front office agrees. So uh, I'll align with the front office and I'll just say, give me another really great cornerback and let's make it really hard on these quarterbacks, these young quarterbacks that are in the AFC, these up and coming guys. Let's make life really difficult on them and slow their process down a little bit so that Miles Garrett and whoever else can get after it and finish some sacks. When you look at uh, the linebacker position, is it kind of like the defensive version of, of running backs? Now, it's not fair because the Browns clearly value running backs with Hunt and Chubb. But uh, across the league, you know, the, the, the feeling seems to be, you know, we get a running back and we kind of change them out every three or four years. Is that kind of the, the mindset with linebackers these days because everybody passes so much? It seems like that's that's taking on, and I, I think it depends on the organization, right? I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are always going to value linebackers. I think the Baltimore Ravens are, are always going to, to some level, value linebackers, and, and they're a very you know analytically driven organization. But I, I think with the Browns, I don't know if they're really going to value that position for a lot of the reasons you said. It's a little more interchangeable, and I think Joe Woods wants to have safeties on the field. I think he wants to have versatility. I mean, how do you deal with a guy like a Travis Kelsey, right? You've got to have an athletic guy who can come up and hit, but who can also cover. And, and these are the types of problems you have to deal with as the Kelsey's, the George Kittles, all, all these bigger tight ends and bigger receivers are, are coming into the league. Guys are moving around in formations a lot more. It, it's so much more valuable to have those versatile safeties, I think. So yeah, I think the Browns kind of view that as a little bit interchangeable and they're going to look for value. Like they got out of BJ Goodson, uh, who they looked at, thought he was undervalued. They went out and brought him in and he ended up having a pretty nice year for him. Yeah, the other thing about running backs is, or um, linebackers rather, is offenses will try to match up running backs on them. So you're again, you're looking for guys that can run in space with athletic running backs and linebackers, and that's usually a safety. Yeah, I mean, just look at the Browns' offense this year, and one of the things Kevin Stefanski was really good at was getting Jarvis Landry in situations where there was a linebacker across from him. Doing the same with Kareem Hunt. Go back and watch the Baltimore game. Uh, there was a wheel route where Kareem Hunt got matched up with a linebacker. Baker saw it right away. He hit Kareem Hunt on a big play. It happened over and over again with Jarvis Landry. You get these tight ends on linebackers. It's just so much more valuable now to focus on having athletic safeties, you know, inside corners who can cover, you know, some bigger guys. I just think with the way offenses are going, where you have bigger athletic players now, not just, you know, kind of these spread offenses, but you've got tight ends and bigger receivers that can play in any spot. Uh, you've got to have safeties and corners who can cover and, and maybe take linebackers out of the equation. Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter here on cleveland.com, as well as the pages of the Plain Dealer. We're going to take a timeout on the other side of the break. We'll look forward at well, you know, what the Browns might do in free agency, what Andrew Barry is thinking, and what Andrew Barry learned this year. More sports and Leslie will be right back. Stay with us. Shelly, we really need to get Nature Stone in our basement. I know, Herb, and it would look great in our laundry room, too. Coach, only Nature Stone is perfect for your basement and laundry room because it never needs replaced like damp carpet and moldy tile. That's why it comes with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. And Nature Stone is absolutely beautiful and so easy to clean. Schedule today at naturestone.com and get up to half your basement or laundry room floor free. Hurry, offer ends soon. Shelly, Nature Stone is perfect for our laundry room and basement. I told you. It's not just a floor. Wow, wow. it's, it's Nature, Nature Stone. Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Casino has sports betting. 
Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Welcome back to more sports and Les Levine, Dave Bacon filling in for Les Levine tonight. Andrew Barry wrapped up his first season as Browns general manager, and it was an impressive season. Uh, Barry seemed to pull all the right moves, especially on the offensive side of the ball in building an offensive line and getting some support for Baker Mayfield. Um, he talked about what he learned in that first year as a general manager. I think the number one thing, Jeff, has been how met, how much time is spent with what I would call crisis management, and I and I realize that you know we obviously had um, a unique season just dealing with you know just dealing with everything COVID related. But you know if it, if it's not COVID, it will always be something else. And you know there are some days where it feels like you do football in between all the all the crisis management, so to speak. But there are just a number of different uh, what I would say maybe issues that. Um, I probably underappreciated how much time it would take to, to be a part of resolving them um, that cross your desk on a, on a daily or, or weekly basis. So I think I have a much better sense of that rhythm, you know, going into year two than perhaps I did, uh, you know, going into year one. Um, so that's, that's probably the biggest. Part. Andrew Barry talked about his first year as GM. Let's bring in Dan Lobby and Dan, um, you know, you go down the list, they were really good at finding players to fill in. I mean, Blake Hans, the guy that ended up playing, you know, guard, then he played tackle, I mean, and, and did very well, all things considered. Yeah, it's a credit to Andrew Barry for, you know, having an, an idea of the type of guys he wanted to bring in uh, and having a profile of guys that he wanted to bring in. And it's also a credit to the coaching staff. You know, these guys were really focused on developing players. Obviously, their goal is to get starters ready to play. But Kevin Stefanski late in the season uh, really gave praise to his assistants for making sure that every guy on that roster was getting developed. And every guy on that roster was going to be ready if their number was called. And we saw just over and over again when they needed somebody to step in and play, you know, even if they were only effective for a short time they were able to help this team win a football game or, you know, against the Steelers, win a playoff game in the case of Michael Dunn and, the, and then Blake Hance. So it's a credit to Andrew Barry for knowing what he wanted to find, knowing what his coaching staff wanted, and a credit to that staff for being able to get those guys ready to go in in a pinch. You've covered the Browns for a while. How nice is it to have, I mean, this is what a football franchise is supposed to look like. I mean, we knew it back, you know, back before the Browns went away. But now it has a football franchise and organization has returned to Berea in it, which is really nice. Yeah, you're not supposed to just clean house every year and, and do coaching searches every year. You know, it's supposed to be little things. Now, none of that is happening this year as, as far as guys leaving to take other jobs and, and finding, you know, new position coaches and new coordinators. But, uh, you know, those are the situations you want where you have young coaches who are good enough to move on to other jobs and, and you're going to replace them. You know, this is the first kind of normal off season this team has had where you're just sort of going in thinking, all right, you got to supplement this roster. You won 11 games. Now, how do you get to that next step? Because you played pretty well against the Chiefs. Even when Patrick Mahomes was out there, you know, there were some good signs that maybe you could have hung in that game if it did end up turning into a shootout. So you've gotten to measure yourself against the defending Super Bowl champions. Now, how do you get to that level and get better? And, and that's what you want to spend your offseason doing. You don't want to spend your offseason trying to install new systems, trying to, you know, hold press conferences, introducing new coaches and new GMs. You just get to have a nice, normal offseason. And even on draft night, you get to kind of sit back for a few hours and, and wait for your pick to come. Um, the, the other thing about that is um, everybody is in their second year. So it, it's very nice. And... How impressive is it that, you know, Andrew Barry had never been a GM before and um, was not only ready for the position, but was ready to succeed in the position? Yeah, I, th I think him and Kevin Stefanski are similar in this, in that they've just, they both came into this job or came into this league kind of targeting eventually getting these jobs. Uh, you know, Andrew Barry's always been a guy who, who says that he likes to kind of be where his feet are. That, that's a phrase he likes to use. But at the same time, I think he's sort of been getting groomed for this. And eventually this was going to happen. So 
But when you kind of know that and you know that's your goal and you know that's the end game, you prepare for it. And I think we've seen that in Andrew Barry. For as young as he is, this is something he's been preparing to do, learning from so many different people. I think we've talked about that on this show before, uh, just learning from so many different people what it takes to do this job. And Kevin Stefanski the same way. You know, he did it a little differently. He was in one place forever. But a lot of people came through that building while he was there. He even predates Mike Zimmer in Minnesota. And he was sort of just building towards this and growing towards this. And when the job finally came along, you know, he was ready. And so these are two guys that I believe guys really smart, knew where they wanted to end up. And I just think they've been preparing themselves for this moment uh, really early in their careers. So an important offseason for the Browns is, is they look at free agency, trying to take the step to the next level, which is always a difficult step to take from, you know, playoff team to elite. We're going to challenge for a champion. The question is the approach to re-signing your own free agents. And Andrew Barry addressed that earlier this week. I think, I really, I guess a couple things in that in that line of thinking for me. I think the first is every year really is unique and different. I think it can be easy to be lulled into the, the thought process. It's like, all right, you know, we got to the divisional round this year. Um, you know, you just carry over the same team and just like, you know, poof, you put guys together and you put one or two pieces and then, you know, you, you go another round. And it, it really, at least in my experience, it has not necessarily worked that way. Myself. Every year is it's just different. The circumstances are different. Every roster has significant turnover. Um, that's just the way of the league. And that's the way that it is in, in you know, a salary cap sport with, um, you know, 53 guys on the roster. So I don't really go into it with the mindset of like, hey, we reached this point. You know, we just need one or, you know, we're just one or two players away. I don't think any team is just one or two players away, you know, quite frankly. So we'll be open-minded and we'll be adaptable and we'll be flexible with our planning. And again, our, our goal is to develop as deep of a roster as possible and to have as many high quality as possible. So in terms of volume, to maybe your, your specific question, in terms of volume, um, too early to say, but, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily pigeonhole us in, in in either direction. And so, Dan, uh, that's kind of the mindset the Browns are approaching this with, and it's kind of refreshing. I mean, that's, you know, every year is different. Don't assume that because you were there before, you're going to be there again. Right. And, uh, you know, in, in other sports, sometimes you do look at it that way, right? In the NBA, there's always sort of a clear, you know, you take steps to get where you want to get to. But the NFL is just a different sport with the injury rate, with the schedule every year. It's just a constantly changing sport, and, and Andrew Barry certainly has an understanding of that. Now, I mean, the reality is the Browns are a very talented football team, and they are, even though he says they aren't one or two pieces away, if you add the right pieces in the right places, they suddenly are a team that can go and would like legitimately compete with the Kansas City Chiefs or you know the Buffalo Bills or whoever, you know the top teams in the NFL. So they're close, but... You also can't just sit back and say, okay, we've got something good here. Let's go. You've got to make it better. And it sounds like that's what he really wants to focus on doing is taking the roster they have and not just being happy with it, but making sure that you add competition and making sure that you add pieces that are going to take this roster to the next level. Last thing I'll ask you before I let you go. When you look at this top two or three things that impressed you the most, that are the biggest signs um, that this franchise is headed in the right direction? I think it starts with Kevin Stefanski. I think it starts with a guy that understands a system, installed that system, understands culture and the importance of culture, and kind of understands the tone he needs to take to kind of lead this team forward. I, I think he understands the situation he came into uh, and all the stability that hasn't been here and just everything that swirls around this team all the time. I think he really understood that when he took this job. And so I think it starts there. Then you go to the quarterback, Baker Mayfield. After that second Pittsburgh game, I'm sorry, after the first Pittsburgh game, there were real questions about what he was and if the Browns might be quarterback shopping this offseason. And he really stabilized there. And he did it along with his head coach and play caller. So now you've kind of got that marriage between head coach and play caller that every organization wants, and you can build it moving forward. And, and then the last thing is just, you know, we hear from Andrew Barry today. We hear a little bit. He doesn't say much, but he sprinkles in little things about his philosophies, the way he views team building and all of that. And you can just tell that this team has a vision. There are really smart people in charge of this team. They seem to understand how to build a roster, and, and they're going to be able to go out and execute that vision. So I think those three things are, are really why Browns fans should feel good about this organization. Last thing I'll ask you 
the vision. I feel like that's been missing in the past. I don't think there was, I think it was kind of, let's get this guy and this guy. I think there seems to be an overall plan and that's kind of what they're doing right now. Let's go and, and put our plan in place for how we're going to improve our roster next year. Yeah, you, you really do have two guys who are on the same page. You know, this isn't uh, Mike Pettin and Ray Farmer going, going back a few years. This isn't Hugh Jackson and Sashi Brown. Uh, this isn't even, you know, John Dorsey and Hugh Jackson when those two got forced together. They, they finally, you know, went with that route where everything's going to be aligned. Everybody's on the same page. And look, the goal is always, no matter who's in charge, the goal is to always win the Super Bowl. But you've got to have people in charge who share a vision on how to get there. And I think the Browns have found that in these two. Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter here on Cleveland.com, as well as in the pages of The Plain Dealer. As always, uh, we appreciate the time and the insight. I'm sure we'll be checking back in with you. Thanks very much, Dan. All right, thank you. All right, Dan Lobby, Browns beat reporter, and uh, that will do it for this edition of More Sports and Les Levine. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Ellis Williams will join us on More Sports and Les Levine, the weekend winner's edition. Stay safe, everyone. We will see you again tomorrow night.